In this video, you will learn how to use Audacity step-by-step -step to help your voice sound much better after editing. So I am assuming you have already downloaded Audacity. If you haven't, you can download it here at audacityteam.org for free. So select your operating system and then download the newest version, which in this case is this one. All right, also, please do not use the ready built in laptop mic to record your audio. It will sound cloudy, unclear, and painful to the ears. You can get a really good quality USB mic for cheap these days, like the Blue Snowball and the Samsung Meteo mic. If you have a look on Amazon, you can find them there, and this will greatly improve the quality of your voice from the start. If you're recording your voice in Audacity, so you're not using a different software to record your voice, then I always recommend recording in mono first. Then once you have cleaned up your audio track, you can then make that a stereo track afterwards. And that will ensure that your audio is playing from both sides, left and right, rather than coming out of one speaker or one side of the car which you really don't want. So let me show you how you can edit your audio track first, and then I will show you how to make your mono track into a stereo track and export it that way. So I'm going to import an audio which I recorded earlier using Audacity by clicking on File on the top left corner, then select Import, this is the audio file that I recorded using Audacity. So I'm going to select it and open it. You can see that this is a mono track. So the audio is only playing from one side at present. So let's play that back quickly. Paul had a purpose, and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. So once you have installed Audacity, this is how the editing interface looks like. If you're on Windows, definitely select Windows Direct Sound here. And like I mentioned, if you're using Audacity to record your voice, then make sure you select Mono Recording first. This is the area where you can choose your recording device. So for example, if you have a microphone, then select it from here. You can record, stop, play and pause over here. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please like the video. This helps out with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can find the video. Thank you. Let's talk about tools. This is the selection tool. So this is the tool that you're going to be using the most. And this is the zoom tool. You can zoom in on different parts of your track with this tool. You can play and stop your audio by hitting the space bar. When you stop it with your space bar, it will go back to exactly where you originally placed your selection cursor. Also, let's say you have two tracks. So I've just duplicated this one by hitting Ctrl D on my keyboard. So for the track that you only want to hear, simply click on solo and press play. So you can easily switch back and forth between tracks by clicking on solo. And on the top right side, you have the zoom in and zoom out tools again, and the silence audio selection, which I will show you how to use later. Now let's continue with cleaning up our audio. The first thing I want to do is to remove background noise from my audio. So background noise is really any sound other than the sound that you want to hear. For example, that static white noise that accompanies a lot of recordings. So first, I'm going to keep clicking on the zoom in tool until I am zoomed in enough to select a few seconds of just white noise so that Audacity knows what to filter out. So I'm going to hold down the left part of my mouse and drag it towards the right to select at least one second of just white noise on my audio track. A quick recommendation is to leave about a half second prior to the audio starting 
to capture background noise, as you can see I've done here. So once you have done your selection, click on Effect, Noise Reduction, and then Get Noise Profile. Next, double click on your audio track to select all of the audio track you want filtered. Then click on Effect again, Noise Reduction, and choose how much noise you want filtered out. I like to keep these settings as they are. However, if you move the cursor or the slider towards the left, you're reducing how much noise gets filtered out. And if you slide the cursor to the right, you're increasing the amount of noise that gets filtered out. So I'm going to leave the settings on default and click OK. Now let's play that back. All right, no more background noise. Yay! A lip smack sounds like this. You know when you smack your lips together while talking, which can't be helped sometimes. To remove lip smacks, select the lip smack, so just that area. And this usually looks like a line on the silent part of your audio. You can also select a bit of noise that comes afterwards with the lip smack if you have it there. Also what I recommend is to always play back your lip smack so that you don't remove any real audio as well with that. And then click on the Silence Audio Selection tool to remove. A plosive is that explosion of air that comes out of your mouth when you say P pop. Port. Purpose. <laughs> now when I zoom in on this, you'll find that plosives often look very, very similar to another. That is a plosive, for example. That is a plosive. And that is a plosive. <laughs> so I find the best way to tackle plosives, unless you are doing a very long recording, is to eliminate them individually. So I'm going to select the plosive and only the plosive. Now that that is highlighted, click on Effect and Fade In. So you see that that has now brought it down already. But it is still there and I want to bring it down even more. So I'm going to hit Ctrl R on my keyboard to repeat that. And I'm going to do that again, Ctrl R, until it is much smoother. Paul had a purpose, and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. Okay, so you can see that sounds a lot better. So this is how you can remove a plosive. Equalizing your voice means that you're really increasing the volume of some frequencies while reducing others. Now this can be a very effective way to improve your voice in Audacity. And many people would suggest that you do a bass boost at 9 decibels and a treble boost at 9 decibels. However, the problem in that is audio might not sound clear and natural after this effect. So the bass boost can really muffle our audio and bringing up trebles just accentuates some of the syllabums, which makes our voice sound very unnatural. So what I recommend is to bring down the decibel level to 3 decibels for the bass boost and treble boost and then work your way up to see what really fits your voice. Now if you're using the new version of Audacity, then equalization is now called filter curve. So once you click on effects, look for filter curve, then click on manage and factory presets, select bass boost, and then drag it down to 3 decibels. And finally, roll off or create a curve at around 65 hertz, which makes the audio sound a lot more pleasing to the ear. And if you're a female, you can start that roll off even sooner at around 140 
or 130 hertz, depending on your voice. Now we can do something very similar to the treble boost. Again, click on effects and filter curve. Then select treble boost. So if you're looking for something quick, just bring it down to three decibels. So that it doesn't produce that piercing sound, which is quite unpleasing to the ears. All right. So this is really a very quick and easy way to equalize your voice. So I've left one plosive on my wave track or audio track just to show you what a compressor can do. The compressor effect basically reduces the height or the loudness of these spikes without touching the softer parts which are down here. When we go to effect and compressor, the threshold is the volume level at which the compression starts to be applied. It ignores sound below this threshold. For example, this is negative 10. Anything below this would simply be ignored. But if it passes above that, it will start reducing it. Ratio is important, so you decide how much the high parts will be reduced. I use 2 to 1 ratio, meaning that it would reduce the part of the spike that are louder than negative 40 decibels by half of what it was before. So right about here. The attack time all the way down and the release time all the way down. Let's see the before and this is the after. Before and after. So you can see that the spike has now been reduced. So much better. So right here I can tell just by looking at my waveform or audio track that this is going to be set at too low of a volume. So we're going to want to boost that up. So what I need to do is to select my audio track by double clicking on it. Then I'm going to go to effect and choose normalize. So we want to set it to negative one decibels. And we are really aiming for an amplitude that is really consistent at about 0.5 throughout our audio track. So you can see 0.5 is right here. So we want our waveform or audio track to be around this range. You can also set that to negative two decibels or negative three decibels, which doesn't increase the volume as high as negative one decibels. So I'm going to leave it at negative one decibels because I want the amplitude raised quite a bit. So you can see that our high peaks now go up to 0.5. So we have an audio file here that is a lot louder and clearer. Let's just look at the before and the after. Before and after. You can also use the limiter effect to reduce spikes on your audio track if you want. If you don't have this showing on the effects, make sure that it is enabled here where it says add remove plugins. If I scroll down, you can see that mine is enabled. And when I go to effect and select limiter, we can do a negative three decibel and that would still keep your audio track at a good volume. If you increase the dB, the audio track can become lower. So keep that in mind. So you can see now once that has been applied that the spike has been reduced even further. Now that we have finished editing our audio, let's make it into a stereo track. So control D to duplicate that track. Then we click on audio track at the top track and select make stereo track. And now we have audio coming from the left and the right speakers in stereo. So let's compare our edited audio with the original audio. Paul had a purpose, and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. Paul had a purpose, and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. So you can see that sounds a lot better. 
up here. So there you go. Once you have finished editing your audio track, of course, we want to export it. So we click on file at the top left corner. You can export it as a WAV or MP3 file. Be aware that WAV is a lot bigger. MP3 file is also super and it's much smaller. So let's save it as an MP3 file for this example. So this is how to use Audacity step-by-step -step to make your voice sound better. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. If it was, please like this video and subscribe for more videos like this one. Bye-bye.